political correctness. I think this phrase, political correctness, must date to the last 10 years or so um, in the meaning that it now has, which is that you must be careful about what you say and what you do to make sure that it is in line with current views of what is acceptable, particularly in terms of race, sex, religion, and a little bit politics. So it is something which, of course, exists in all societies through all of time. In Oxford and Cambridge colleges, um, for a long time, it said you weren't allowed to talk about those subjects, uh, particularly sex, religion, and uh, politics, because it would lead to division and bad feeling, uh, which would last in a closed fellowship for a long time. So we have worried and curtailed our speech um, for various reasons in ma many societies. But what is seems to me unusual now is that uh, whereas through 70, 80, 90 percent of my life, long life, you obviously didn't talk about certain things and you didn't use certain expressions, but it was assumed that it was up to you uh, what those were. And if you uh, stepped over the boundaries, then individuals would maybe protest or claim that you were being racist or whatever. But now it's much, much more widespread. It goes right across the media, it goes across politics. Um, and one feels now that one is treading um, along a very narrow tightrope between saying something interesting and creative and uh, perhaps challenging and avoiding hurting people's feelings. Because political correctness, I suppose in another way, is about not saying things which would be hurtful to other people. And to that extent, it's obviously a good. Um, there's no point in gratuitously um, hurting other people's feelings. And if they have deep felt beliefs, which is often the case in the case of religion particularly, then why offend them? So uh, you can see good motives behind it, and sometimes it's called for. But it seems t um, to have two um, aspects which um, sometimes trouble me. One is that it's constantly shifting and changing. So one day it's uh, perfectly all right to talk about someone as black and uh, suddenly you hear that maybe you shouldn't call them black, you should call them something else. Um, one day it's perfectly all right uh, to use the male pronoun in your writing, then you should um, change it to uh, he or she always. Um, one day it's perfectly all right to talk about a slave in your writings, but now I'm told I shouldn't use that word, I should use enslaved, because that shows that it was done to them. So it goes on, and these things change very rapidly with current tides and uh, currents of politics and international relations. So you, you are often caught out saying something, and many a, a public figure has crashed to the ground through saying inadvertently in some tweet or uh, email something which is unacceptable. And one aspect of that is that um, if you start combing backwards, you will of course find that since these things change, um, what they said 20, 30 years ago in their letters and um, recorded messages and so on, is now sounds fairly horrific. And um, people tend to assume that uh, they should have known about this at the time, and therefore are very angry with them. Um, the other thing that slightly worries me about it all is that it's terribly not only temporocentric, in other words, it's constantly changing and just reflecting current obsessions, but also ethnocentric. And that is to say that there are many things that I'm told I shouldn't or can't say about, say, certain religions. 
I mustn't, um, uh, some uh, people in Islam uh, are very sensitive to uh, attacks on their religion, and we've had the recent stabbing of uh, Salman Rushdie. Um, but the people who are often um, attacking, uh, as in the cartoon Charlie Hebdo, um, making cartoons of the Prophet, when you say yes, yes, you shouldn't, maybe that was overstepping things, but we've got to have free speech. So um, Salman Rushdie and Charlie Hebdo and the rest can, can go on. Um, you shouldn't take religion so seriously. Christianity, you know, um, you have the life of Brian and satires on Christianity and we don't go around uh, threatening to kill the people who do that. That's all true. But there are many areas which we um, don't even notice um, where if uh, you say something against another religion, if you say something uh, against um, Judaism, for example, certain things about Zionism or about Israel, and that's the end of your career. Um, if you say certain things about race, um, uh, that would be the end of your career. So you can be free to express your views on things that uh, we all agree we dislike, like the Russians or the Chinese or um, uh, maybe some religious groups or whatever. But if you attack things which we hold dear, like the dear old queen or whatever, then it's another matter. So it's um, looked at from way above, not just anchored in the present. The whole movement seems to be um, skewed in various ways. Uh, and it's also obviously very stifling. I now have to be uh, more careful and aware, which is perhaps good, of what I say, which I always was when I lectured for years at Cambridge, many things I knew I couldn't say. So we have to be politically circumspect. It's not just politics, of course, but uh, on the other hand, um, if you become so wary and afraid that you can't criticize, and particularly you can't criticize those in power because they say you're being uh, politically incorrect, then um, that closes down freedom and democracy and anything else that we value.